and now we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by cosine x squared. And when we, we do that, we're going to get negative 2 sine x over cosine x squared times cosine x plus 1 to the third power over cosine x to the third power. And then we simplify cosine x squared uh, with cosine x to the third. And we get negative 2 sine x over cosine x plus 1 to the third power over cosine of x. Now we're going to use the trig function to simplify negative 2, uh, negative 2 sine x times cosine of x equals negative sine 2x, which gives us negative sine 2x over cosine x plus 1 to the third. OK. That's a lot of calculations. Uh, let me ask you one question. What yes. is the reciprocal rule? Because we didn't teach, we didn't talk about a reciprocal rule in class. We talked yeah. about the quotient rule, true rule. Can you explain your reciprocal rule? So basically, if it, when it's one over um, uh, any function, that's like basically mm -hmm. one over f or one over g, whatever, as I wrote on the top row. Right. So then we're going to take that g, that's going to be g to the neg uh, negative g uh, derivative over g to the square, which I wrote for the reciprocal rule. All right. So where did you get this reciprocal rule? In the book? No, no. Uh, I, I, I take two ring, right? So I. Because uh, anything else? Right. Yeah. I don't like you to remember extra stuff. This comes from a quotient rule. OK. OK, let me just explain why this works. OK. Well, this is so small. Let me try this. OK, you see this right now, right? You have f equals to g inverse. 1 over g is a g inverse, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just a quotient rule, right? You see the quotient rule? What? You can start from the very beginning to use the quotient rule. What is the g inverse? Yeah, yeah. Right, the g inverse. So try to use that. You could use, um, OK, if you want to remember this, that's fine. Cause Actually, it, it, that I have a formula sheet. And that was right. like, um, when I looked at it, it was like much easier for me to see. That's I why see. I used okay. it. OK, that's OK. That's OK. Yeah. It basically comes from quotient rule. All yeah. right. OK. OK, beautiful calculation. Great. Thank you. Thank you. OK, next one. Who's next one? Um, I'm ready to do number four. OK. Oh, I thought I was next. OK, sorry. No, no, you could go ahead. I'm just. No, who's, who's screen is join? Whoever is um, screen is Me, Malika. Malika. Malika, you go. OK. So here what I did was we do the chain rule. So I wrote out f of x is x to the power of 6. And the f of prime is, I mean, f prime of x is 6x to the power of 5. And then g of x is v over v to the power of 3 plus 1. And then g prime of x is that whole thing that I wrote. So um, then f, capital F of v, prime of v will be equal to f prime gx times g to the um, prime x, which is, I use the chain rule there. And then after everything, I, um, I plugged everything in, so I substituted everything. And then I got 6 times v over v3, I mean, over v to the power of 3 plus 5 over um, to the power of 5 times V or v, v to the power of 3 plus 1 minus 3V to the power of 3 all over V to the power of 3 plus 1 um, to the power of 2. And then I just simplified the, um, the expression. And then I got the derivative, which is equal to negative 6V to the power of 5 times 2V um, to the power of 3 minus 1 all over v3 plus 1 um, to the power of 7. 
Okay, great. Just one suggestion. You yeah. see the D prime. Okay, Which first, first of all, it's great, but you are able to see this composition of functions of f of g. So okay. g prime, you can simplify g prime from here. Just simplify it all from there, right? You simplify it starting from here. So then when you put them together, it's easier to calculate. Okay, you oh, okay, okay, I got it. Over here. It's, I think it's better to calculate over here. So you get a simplified version of g prime. Okay, yeah, yeah, that would be better actually, yeah. yeah then you multiply together. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, next one. Right, just get yourself ready, show your screen, share your screen. All right. Uh, hello, Professor. Yes. Okay, uh, oh, hold on a second. Okay. Um. Okay. So. Um. Uh. Uh. The question is. Uh. Uh. F s. Uh. Equals to. Uh. Square root of s square plus one. Uh. Over. Uh. S square. Uh, plus four. So. Uh. I use the chain rule first. Like. Uh. Derivative of the. I convert the square root into one half. To to the power of one half and. Uh, Derivative of uh, this equation to one half and the derivative of uh, the inner equations. So the uh, for the first first one uh, uh, it equals to one half and the square uh, s square plus one over x square uh, plus four to the negative one half. And uh, the second one I use the uh, I think it's quotient rule. So like um, so that's all the equations. So like, uh, so we got like one over two of square root of uh x square plus one over uh s square plus plus four times two s times uh the rest. So if I simplify all of this, uh, so I uh the final answer I got three s over a uh, square root of s square plus one parentheses uh s square plus four to the uh, three over two power. Okay, all right, so that's fine. You wrote as outer square root of x in the, like this. That's just your understanding. But basically, you are able to see this composition of two functions. Yes. All right, and then, so only one suggestion. So your final answer is a 3s divided by square root of x squared plus 1. Then the second term you wrote as s, s squared plus 4 raised by 3 over 2. Uh, yes. Usually, usually we don't the final answer. We don't write, want to write the exponent as a fraction. So oh. how we write this? We would write x squared plus four square root of x squared plus four. Okay. Over, okay. All right. Thank you, Ray. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next one. Okay. Great. Uh. Yeah. I hope that's not too blurry. So. This one is number, oh, okay. So this one is number four. Um, so we're finding f prime of sine um, parentheses cotangent x. Um, and so I start off with the chain rule since we have a function within a function. Um, so f becomes uh, sine u and u is cotangent x. Um, and so the derivative of sine is um, always cosine. So we have cosine u. Um, we can substitute um, the cotan uh, cotangent back in. So we have cosine um, parentheses cotan cotangent of x. Um, and then to find the derivative of cotangent, the derivative of cotangent is always um, negative um, cosecant square x. And so, like, as a final answer, um, it's f prime equals negative cosecant square x uh, times cosine parentheses uh, cotangent of x. Okay, great. Yes, right. You're missing f prime, but right. 
you you put in your words a prime equals this yes okay thank you but this one if you go let me see can you see my arrow see my cursor uh, right no. here it's a little typo here what you wrote a d over x you mean d dx right dx oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. okay thank you that one okay next one Maybe we did we cover all questions. Oh, a mere four is taken. That was a check of four. Uh, Alexandra, twenty-six. Yes, hi. Could you see hi. the work? Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah, I had taken this on my iPad earlier, so I did number twenty-six. So what I had done was the quotient rule. So uh, I don't know if you could see my pointer. No. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, I can okay. see. It. Okay. So I I um I placed in the numerator as f of x as you can see in the orange brackets, and I placed g of x as the denominator. So I found next to that I found the um, derivatives f prime of x and g prime of x. And so, no, so I know that the quotient rule states that for this function, um, f prime of x is 4 times y minus 1 to the third times 1. And then you take the g of x regular, which is y squared plus 2y um, to the power of 5, subtracted by um, f of x, which is y minus 1 to the fourth multiplied by g prime of x, which I had already put here, 5 times y uh, squared plus 2y to the fourth, multiplied by the inside of um, this part, which is 2y plus 2, and that is all over the denominator squared. And so um, I know that these 5 and 2 should be multiplied. So um, this numerator, which um, I had rearranged um, is all over y squared plus 2y to the 10th power as highlighted well, in orange right the numerator can be simplified a little bit okay yeah let me okay. yeah we read it here. you simplify this way you factor out the common factors you see y minus 3 raised by y minus 1 raised by 3 that would be a common factor y minus 1 raised by 3 is a common factor. Let's see what else. y squared plus 2y would be a common factor. So let's see. y squared plus 2y. Let's see. That's it. So this has two terms. So y minus 1 raised by 3 is a common factor. Then y squared plus 2y because this is only one y squared plus 2y. So then you took the rest, right? The first time you have y, four times y squared plus 2y with by 4, because one, one term is already out, minus 5, y minus 1, then 2y plus 2. It just can be simplified a little bit. Then you see the bottom, y squared plus 2y raised by 10, right? Can simplify this common factor. So the denominator would become y squared plus y raised by 9. Sounds OK? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, let's, uh, let's see who's next. I have in the chat, so someone's answer is not agreeing with others. But I wish I see this earlier. I didn't see this earlier. Okay. Can I do 12? Yeah, go ahead, Karen. Oh, then we have Sophia and Karen. And I would like, let me see, can I do uh, someone's answer? Okay, Henning has a different answer for which question. And maybe you show later, all right? Show later to see. 
But some people agree with you. Malika said yes. Okay, Victor. Okay, we'll talk about that question later. Okay, Henry wants to do number 10. All right, that's fine. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, yes. Okay, so it's a little, it's a little faint, so you can see it. But basically, I separated it into uh, the outer, the outer portion and the inner portion, which would be separated to three, like cube root x and then one plus tan t, and then you find the derivative of the outer function, with, which would be one third um, times the input, which would be one plus tan t to the power of negative two over three times the derivative of the inner function, which is secant squared x. And then you could uh, simplify that further into secant squared x over three times one plus tan t to, this, to the power of two thirds. And then you can just simplify the denominator into three to the cube root of one plus tan t to squared. That's right, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you can mute yourself, too much noise. All right, thank you. Oh, Karen, Karen, can you mute yourself, please? That's not me. That's uh, that's. Oh, that's someone that's else. Ray. Yeah, that's someone else. Oh, Ray, mute yourself, please. Oh, right. Kevin, someone pointed this out. RT, right? So, Could you use X? Try to use a T. Try to use the, oh, the same. Oh, word. sorry. Yeah, I misread that. Yeah, I make the same mistake sometimes. Thank you. Someone pointed it out. Thank you. Ray. Okay, now let's see. I think uh, we're missing Sophia, right? Is that share share uh, unavailable? Share application unavailable. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, let me see the message. Let me mute you. Let me mute you. It's uploading. Okay, so um okay, so first I distinguish f of x and g of x. G of x is two times x to the third plus five, and f of x is g to the x to the power of four. And then I uh, found the derivative using the chain rule. Um, dy over dx equal, oh, okay, so I just rewrote it. Okay, so um, r u is g of x. So I did d, dy over dx equals to u to the power of four times u. Um, then, uh, let's see. Okay, so then dy over dx equals to 4, um, open parentheses, 2 times x to the third plus 5, close parentheses, to the power of 3 times 6 times uh, six times x squared. And then I multiplied 4 times 6, that's how I got 24, and I took out the x squared from the parentheses and left the 2 times, two times x to the third plus 5 to the power of 3 in the parentheses. And that's it. All right. So right, you use you to help yourself to understand. All right, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sophia. You're welcome. Thank you. The next one, Amia wants to take a 24.
Uh, okay, so Noella can do 24. Okay, please, 24. I think Hinden too. Hinden wants to do 10. Let's get yourself ready, all right? And also, one question you guys do not agree with the answer. And maybe someone can show that too. Professor, could you make me a presenter? Oh, I haven't yet. Or Hinden could go first, yeah. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, for this one, Ursa did it before, but I didn't get the same answer. So okay. for this one, I just brought the denominator up, and so the exponent, no, yeah, change it to negative two, and I use the chain rule for that, so it turns into negative two, one plus secant x to the negative three power times the derivative of the inner term, which is one, so it turns into secant x and 10x. And then we can we can have like negative exponent as like the answer. So I just brought it back down and then it's like negative two secant x, 10x over one plus secant x to the third. Great, this would be the way of doing it. So Pro Earth, professor, yes. I did it, but I further simplified that, that answer. That's what I did. Uh, no, you someone. So I should leave it that way. Right, your way is fine, but somehow in the middle, you know, you made some mistakes. So that's why I said you don't need something called a reciprocal rule. Okay, just okay, do this. Yeah. Just you, you see how simple this is. Yeah, it's you know what happened because I got that answer, but I further simplified this. That's what happened. I have that answer. Oh, and then on and further simplify. So should I just leave it as it is? Right. This is a perfect answer. Okay. Thank you. you. But the point is, you don't need something called a reciprocal rule. Okay. Okay. We, we have thank never you. talked about the rule. We 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 don't want the extra rules for that. Okay. Right. You know, at the most, so the if you don't see this, if you don't want to use this, you could think as quotient rule. All right, so your reciprocal rule, your tutor told you basically comes from quotient rule because derivative of one is zero. Yes, that makes sense. But you don't need to remember extra rules. Okay, this great. Is what you're doing to do it. All right, thank you, Helen. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. Victoria, six. I don't think we go over six yet. So you could try a six. And uh, anything else? Noella 12 or 24? Well, I was searching for you, Noella. I didn't see you. Can you speak so I could see you? Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm here. I don't see, oh, right here. Yeah, go ahead. So it's great. So, so far we have been reviewing for Chinru. And to be able to see a function as a composition of two functions, which sometimes is hard. And people, if anyone has any question, um, please feel free to ask questions. Do you see my work, Professor? Yes, 24, right. Okay, so for this question, using um, the example or the setup that we use in class such as um, submitting the such as using other functions to represent both the inner and the outer parts so on the side as you can see i set f of x um, equal to g times h f of x, h of x and then the derivative of the derivative setup is also there so using the quotient rule i found the derivative of the first um, ex expression times the second um, expression um, minus x times the derivative of the second expression over the um, over radical 7 minus 3x squared. So 
using the chain rule for the derivative of radical 7 minus 3x, um, as you can see on the side, I found that the derivative was um, 3 over 2 times radical 7 over 7 minus 3x. So using the derivative that I found for that, I further um, simplified the fraction. And um, as you can see, I had to multiply um, the radical 7 minus 3x over 1 by a common denominator so that I could combine the top two fractions. And um, after simplifying further, um, I got an end result of negative 3x plus 14 over 2 times radical 7 minus 3x times 7 minus 3x. Great. Okay. Do we agree with her answer? It looks great to me. All right, thank you, Noella. No problem, thank you. Oh, Victoria, okay, Victoria. Yes. Can everyone see that? Number yeah. six. Okay, so for number six, the question is y equal to sine square root of x. So I, uh, I put it to two different uh, functions, the inner and outer function. The outer function is f of x, which is uh, equal to sine of x, and the inner function is g of x, which is equal to square root of x, which can be rewritten as x to the power of one half. Then I use the chain rule with, um, uh, before that, I find the derivative of f prime of x, which is cosine of x, and then g prime of x, which is one half x to the power of negative one half. Then I use a chain rule, um, y equal to f prime of g of x equal to f prime of square root of x is equal to cosine of square root of x. Then y prime will equal to f prime of square root of x times g prime of x, which is one half x to the power of negative one half. And when you uh, simplify that, you get one half x to the power of negative one half times cosine of square root of x. And when you um, simplify that, you get cosine of square root of x over two square root of x. And that's the answer. Perfect. 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 Okay, great. Uh, only one thing. Let's get used to the language. This is called a composition of two functions. So you are writing y into a composition of f of g. So it's a composition of functions. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Victoria. Okay, great. Let me see. Um, have we done every question? Let's check. So I have done a 10, 12, 14, 15, 22. I don't think we did 22. Anyone wants to do 22? Oh, we did 22. We did 22. We really did 22. And 24, 26, 28. We did every question. All right. Anybody has any question? So, so far, talking about differentiation of functions. We, we use power rule. Power rule applies to polynomial functions or polynomial-like functions, which means we can write a variable to an exponent. If we can write a variable into an exponent, we can apply power rule. And trig rules, like derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is a negative sine, it's periodic. Also, we talk about a product rule. Right? Some functions we can can be seen as product of two functions, and some functions can be seen as a quotient of two functions. 
And also we'll talk about Qinru. Some functions can be seen as a composition of functions. Then we'll apply Qinru. And I think you guys did a beautiful job. And um, let's see. So any questions for me before I go further? All right, so have those in our toolbox. All right, we're going to talk about one more differentiation, right? All the previous uh, skills are for functions. What if we don't, because we don't have functions all the time in math, right? Let's see, we have this. We have x squared plus y squared equal to the 1. We have a unit circle. So this is representation for unit circle, right? Or like this. We have the x squared plus y squared equals 25. That's a representation for a circle with radius 5. So how are we, we won't be able to write this into function, right? It's a circle. It's a two functions. If we cut in half, the, the, the above semicircle is a function. The bottom semicircle is a function. But putting together is not a function, right? We can write it into two functions. The top, the, the top semicircle is a positive square root of 25 minus x squared. This is a y, basically, right? Because we can write y, let me write here. So another way here we can write as y squared equals to 25 minus x squared. Then we square root both sides. When we square root both sides, we get a positive plus minus square root of 25 minus x squared. So the, the positive part is this top semicircle, the positive. We get a function. And the bottom semicircle is negative square root of 25 minus x squared. So we cut in the middle, we do get two functions. But it's itself is another function. So but if even it's not a function, if it's an equation, we still can talk about the rate of change. We still can talk about the rate of change of x in terms of y. What rate of change of y in terms of x? Right? So we can always we can also talk about that. So how to do that? Something called implicit differentiation. Right? What does that mean? That means we will take differentiation, we will consider the rate of change x and rate of change of y simultaneously. Simultaneously. So let's see this one. Let's see this one. If I want to find out dy dx, right? if I, I want to find out dy over dx, basically means, you know, I want to see how does y change in terms of x change, or what is the rate of change of y in terms of x? Well, we're talking about, in, of course, you know, differentiation talks about instantaneous rate of change, right? So how do we find this guy, dy over dx? Okay, we do this. We take a derivative with both. So take a derivative with both. With x, with the x term is exactly the same as before. So we would write, you know, derivative of x squared would be 2x, right? So basically we differentiate both terms. So that would be 2x. Then what's the derivative of y squared? We still apply the same rule, power rule. We get 2y. And now something's different. Now we we'll attach dy or y prime with a y term. We don't do anything with the x term because the dx dx is one, right? Because when we take a derivative with x squared, we can consider we take a derivative with x, right? Okay, we get power rule give us two x. Then we have dx over dx. Well, dx over dx is one, so we don't have to write that. But when we take a derivative of y term we we'll apply the same rule, power rule, get 2y. 
But then now it's dy over dx. So we'll attach dy over dx with a y term. Then what is the derivative of a constant? What's 25? Same rule. Zero. Derivative of a constant is zero. Now we want to find out this y prime. Okay, dy dx is just the same as y prime. Okay, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't want to write more than I have to, so I use y prime. Now I just have to solve for y prime. So y prime equals to negative x over y, right? I move 2x to the other side, that divided by 2. I get a negative 2x on the right hand side. I divide by 2. I divide by 2y. So I get negative x over y. So that's my dy dx. That's my y prime. So giving me an equation, I can still talk about rate of change of one variable in terms of another. We right. still can find dy dx. So in this way, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to try to make the equation couple of functions or anything. We have this, this is called implicit differentiation. Okay, let's see this one. Let's see this one. Also, we want to find the rate of change, rate of change of y in terms of x. Let's let's do that too. Let's use the implicit differentiation. So here is for this. Right. Now let's try to do this one. So we take a derivative, we we'll do the same thing. Right. We we'll take a derivative simultaneously with x with y. If you give me the other variable, z, right, I still can do that too. So with x cube, derivative is 3x squared. Then with y, I have to be careful. Right. Why I have to attach a take the derivative, then multiply by y prime. So I get 3y squared times attach y prime, multiply by y prime. Then equals to now I have 6 times xy. xy is a product, so I have to apply product rule. So I leave 6 out of the differentiation. I take a derivative with x times y, product rule. But like we were saying, take a derivative of the first one, derivative of x, which is just 1, multiply by the second, which is 1 times y, so I get a y. Then plus the first one times derivative of the second one. But what's the derivative of y? Derivative of y, apply power rule, is 1. But then I have to multiply by y prime. So 1 times y prime, I get a y prime. Right, so take a derivative of this. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Derivative of y term, I have to multiply by y prime in the end. So I apply power rule, I get 3y squared times y prime. Then x times y is a product. I apply product rule. I leave 6, the scalar, out of the differentiation. So derivative of x is 1, 1 time, that's just y. Then I do the first one times derivative of the second one, which is x times derivative of y. Derivative of y is 1 times y prime, which is just y prime, y prime, x, y prime. Now, let's see. Let's simplify right away. I see every term has 3 as a factor, right? So just simplify. So I, I want to solve for y prime. So I'm putting y prime together. So at the same time, I'm dividing by 3. So I have y squared y prime. Then I pull this, you know, 6 divided by 3, I get 2. 2 times x y prime. I move to the left hand side, it becomes negative. Minus 2 x y prime. Equals to 2y, 2y divided by 3, 2y minus x squared. I move x squared to the other side. Minus x squared. Let's regroup them. 
Okay, I divide every term by three. You know, whenever I have an equation, I can divide by the same number, I can multiply by the same number. So I divide by three, I simplify them, then I group the y prime, I put a y prime term on the left hand side. I put the terms without the y prime on the inside. So I get this. So now those two terms have y prime. I factor y prime. Because my goal is to find y prime, to solve a y prime. Okay. So y prime, I factor out a y prime. Then I have y squared minus 2x equals to 2y minus x squared. Now solve for y prime, I just divide both sides by y squared minus 2x. y prime equals to 2y minus x squared divided by y squared minus 2x. So this is the rate of change of y, or dy dx. dy dx equals to this. If you give me any point of x and y, I can find the rate of change, the derivative at the point. So this is called an implicit differentiation. The difference, the difference is just, you know, for y term, you know, marvelously we manufactured y prime. That's the only difference. And the differenti differentiation rule is exactly the same as before. So this y prime into us. All right, so this y prime, y prime. All right, let's see more examples. Any questions? You see x cubed plus y cubed equals 6xy is this curve. Obviously, it's not a function. But even if it's not a function, we can still talk about a rate of change, right, at any point. At any point, we have this tangent line. We have this tangent line. We can talk about the rate of change. Same thing here, right? Same thing, all right. Okay, well, we already did this, right? X squared plus Y squared is 25. That's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of five. So two derivative on both sides. Derivative of number is zero, and derivative of those two terms, derivative of x squared, just two x dx dx, but dx dx is one. Derivative of y squared is two y dy dx, dy dx. So then we simplify, we get two x plus two y dy dx. So we solve a dy dx, which is negative x over y. Then if we want, if we are given any point, let's say this here, three comma four, and we can find out the rate of change, and we can find out the tangent line. We just plug in three for x, four for y, get negative three over four. Let's see if we have the picture here. No, we don't have a picture here. Then plug in those two points, we get the the tangent line representation. Or another way is we figure out three comma four is in the first quadrant. So that would be the top semicircle. But then we use the top semicircle as a function. Then we know how to take the root of the function. We would get the same answer. All right. So this is just another way of doing it. The equation obviously like this, we can cut into two functions. And the three comma four, the point is in the first quadrant, it will be on top semicircle. And then we use the top semicircle function. The answer is the same. Okay, let's see this example. We have x cubed plus y cubed, six x y. So we'll take derivative simultaneously. Uh, x cubed, we get 3x squared. y cubed, 
you get 3y squared dy dx or y prime. Then 6xy will apply product rule. We simplify, we simplify in the end, we'll get a y prime or dy dx equals to this, 2y minus x squared divided by y squared minus 2x. It will give us any point, we can find the tangent line. We can find the rate of change at the point, instantaneous rate of change at the point. And also more, we can, right here, that's the point, 3 comma 3. Okay. We can find out the instantaneous rate of change at this point. And also we can write the representation for this tangent line. So substitute x, y into 3. So we'll get a y prime equals to negative 1. That's a slope of this tangent line. I use a point 3 comma 3, we can write the representation for the tangent line. C, at what point in the first quadrant is the tangent line horizontal? Well, when the tangent line is horizontal, right? Let's see, it might be somewhere here. The slope is zero, right? Slope is zero. So in that case, the slope is zero. So let's see, see, the tangent line is horizontal if the slope is the derivative dy dx or y prime equals zero. So use the expression for a from a, we have this. We say y prime equals zero when the numerator equals zero, right? A fraction is zero is only if and only if the numerator is zero. So that means 2y minus x squared is zero. And we solve this. We got a y equals to a half x squared. That's a parabola, upward parabola. So y equals to half x squared. Then we plug this into our original equation because we want to solve for the point. So we have x cubed plus y cubed. And y is a half of x squared at the point, and equals to this. We we'll solve this. We simplify this. We'll get x cubed, x to the 6, equals to 16x cubed. Right, because we multiply by a on both sides. Right, we have a x cubed plus 1x cubed. Um, we we'll multiply by 8. Then this one, we have a 3x cubed. So we simplify in the end, we have 16x cubed equals to x raised by 6. x raised by 6. Then we solve this, right? We factor out. So we have x cubed. So we factor out x cubed times we we'll basically move this 16x cubed to, to the left-hand side. We factor out x cubed. Then we have x cubed minus 16 equals to 0. Right? We put in a factor form, so we can use a 0 property. And so this gives us two solutions. x equals 0. So this equation itself gives us x equals 0, x equals to cubic root of 16. Okay. Cubic root of 16. Um, 16, let me write 16 raised by over 3. But then we know that it's given this is not in the, it's in the first quadrant. Right, it's in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant. So x cannot be 0. So we just negate x equals 0 solution. So we're left with x cubed equals 16. Well, 16 we can write as a 2 raised by 4. So 16 raised by 1 third is 2 raised by 4 over 3. And we will get a 2 cubic root of 2. So then, so, so we get this. In the end, you know, once we get to x value, we can go back to find the y value. So this is a point.
this is the point this is the point where the tension line is a horizontal or to see the derivative at this point is a zero okay if you have any question feel free to stop me anytime all right let's keep going okay example three find y prime or dy dx with this equation we do the same thing right derivative of a sine is cosine so we have cosine x plus y we do not change the angle now by chain rule the outer layer is sine the inner layer is x plus y so we take a derivative with x we get what one we take a derivative with y with y is one but we have to multiply by y prime so derivative of x plus y is one plus y prime then we see product rule, right? We have y squared times cosine x, product rule. Derivative of y squared is 2y y prime, 2y y prime, then multiply by cosine x. Then y prime times the derivative of cosine x. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Right? The differentiation rule is exactly the same as before. The only difference is when we take a derivative with y term, we multiply by y prime. That's the only difference. Then we distribute. We distribute, we regroup the y prime terms. We, re, we regroup the y prime terms. Then we factor out the y prime. So in the end, we've got a y prime equals to this, right? The graph looks like this. What else do we have to do? That's it, find the y prime. That's it. Okay, let's see more. So example four, find the y double prime. So we take a derivative once, then we take a derivative with its derivative function. Well, let's see how we do that. So we'll apply the same rule, derivative of x raised by four, that's four x cubed. Derivative of y raised by 4 is 4y cubed times y prime. Times y prime. Derivative of 16 is 0. So solve for y prime. y prime equals to negative x cubed divided by y cubed. Right. So now we want to take derivative again. We want to take derivative with this. With this y prime term. So y, prime, y double prime equals to take a derivative of this. And the quotient rule, right? You see this is a quotient, so I apply quotient rule. Leave a negative sign outside. So derivative of x cubed is a 3x squared times the bottom, y cubed. The minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Or what is the derivative of y cubed? Is 3y squared y prime y prime then divided by the bottom square so y cubed squared y to the six and if we want to simplify a little bit okay now so in here we have y prime maybe we don't want to use y we don't want to see y prime in this equation we want y double prime to be represented by x, y only. So we substitute y prime. y prime equals this, right? So we substitute y prime into negative x cubed divided by y cubed. We simplify, so in the end, we get y double prime or d, d square y over dx square equals to this, equals to this expression. The only difference is to, you know, when we take a derivative with y term, we have to multiply by y prime. And also, because this is on x raised by 4 plus y raised by 4 equals 16, so x, y has a such relationship. We can still simplify further because x raised, x raised by 4 plus y raised by 4 equals 16. We can simplify further, so we'll get 
y double prime equals negative 48, x squared divided by y to the 7. So this is something with circles. This is circle-like. You know, x raised by 4 plus y raised by 4 equals 16 is not a circle. It's something like this. All right, let's practice. Okay, let's try. Let's try this this bunch. Um, you know what? Let's try this side because I want to leave the other side as a home. You know, to show next next time. Okay, let's try three up to fifteen. Make sure you try every question. Okay, let's try. Odd numbers, all right. Three, two, 15. Just remember the differentiation rule is the same as before. The only difference is only when you take derivative with y term, you multiply by y prime.
Yeah, try to do every question, then I'll call people to show. Especially those people you haven't showed anything yet, I probably will call your name. So Amir, you finish every question. You fin you tried all three to fifteen odd numbers. Try all the questions. All right, let's do uh, five more minutes. Um, yeah, if you, you could write down number you want to show, but uh, I'm going to call people, all right? Because some, some people right, haven't shown anything yet. Yeah, Carlos, you can show five, because today you haven't shown anything yet. Amir also, Amir didn't get a chance to present. You can show that. And Ryan. Okay, Ryan wants to show three. Okay, so Amir, if Ryan, are you going to be okay? Because Amir wrote three first. Amir, can you show another question? So Ryan, or Ryan, maybe you choose another number because Amir wrote three first. Okay, let's start. Let's see.
Okay, Julie didn't show either. Okay, we'll start with Amir. Amir, you want to show three? Uh, yes, so I'm having trouble actually uploading the picture. So in the chat, you go ahead. So I typed in the chat. So we're given the equation x cubed plus y cubed equals one. So what I first did was I found the derivative of all three parts. So the derivative, the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. The derivative of y cubed is three y squared and the derivative of one is zero. So we can turn that into 3x squared plus 3y squared times y prime is equal to 0. And then from there, I just simplify it, subtract 3x squared both sides, 3y squared, y prime is equal to negative 3x squared, divide by 3y squared on both sides, and you get y prime is equal to negative 3x squared over 3y squared, which simplifies to negative x squared over y squared. That's it. Yeah, nice. Thank you. All right, so Carlos, Carlos Phi. Yeah, um, I don't know how to upload the picture, but if you want, I could uh, present with the camera, the ray camera on. Okay. Okay. Let me just give me a second. I don't know if you can see it. Not yet. Oh, yes. Uh, let me see. Let me make it bigger. Sorry, it's kind of blurry. Right, okay, maybe you can explain that. Okay, so uh, we have to find out the derivative of uh, x squared and the, uh, what is it called? Sorry, I can't see. And the, the and y squared, um, y of, so the exponent of two equals zero. So, uh, sorry, two x, plus x, after the final derivative, it's 2x plus x, final derivative of y of the other equation, um, sorry, minus 2y, and then the 4 turns like turns to 0. Something you are forgetting. Where is your y prime or dy oh, dx? I put it at the uh, end. So y1 oh, equals minus okay. 2x minus 1 okay. over y. I'm sorry. But before that, we have to... Uh, Put the uh, two x to the other side of the zero, and then Hold we put y. Hold on a second, Carlos. Let me ask you this: What is the derivative of x times y? Let me write in the chat for you. So when you take a derivative of x squared, you have two x, right? What's your derivative for x plus x times y? X times y. I cannot see it. I'm sorry. Derivative of x times y. Can you type in the chat? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, Julia is going to show seven. Okay, cost tab at two x plus x d x d y. And then I got um, plus y. That's right. Minus two y y prime equals to zero. Yeah, I agree with you. My, minus two y y prime. Yeah. That's the answer. Well, try to use try to use. You either use a dy dx or you use y prime. Try to use one of one of them. Um, okay, sorry. Yeah. So then, so your answer is y prime equals to. Let me see. So y prime equals to. Um, so we we'll move this one to the other side. We would have two y minus x. 2x plus y, 2x, or negative 2x minus y divided by x minus y. Right. But usually we want to write in a clear, a clean version. We would write this way. 2x, the parenthesis, 2x plus y. They're indicating 
those are two terms in the numerator. Then 2y minus x. Agree with your answer. So this would be cleaner version, let me see. It's in the chat, because we don't want to see so many negative signs. Does this make sense? Oh, OK. Yeah. 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 Thank you. OK. OK, thank you. Uh, Julia, seven? Yeah, can you make me a presenter, please? Oh, OK. Julia. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Ryan, oh, Andrew wants to do nine, that's fine. Ryan has, have you chosen a number yet? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so um, what I did was I took the um, derivative of each side, so of y cosine x and then y also cosine x, and the other side, the derivative of x squared and y squared, and then you get y prime equals cosine x plus y times negative sine x, which equals 2x plus 2y, and the derivative of y. And then with that, you get y prime times cosine x minus y sine x equals 2x plus, um, would, is it possible to get 2y squared prime? Two y, yeah, it is because y. on the third line, I have two y y right. prime. That's exactly right. Y prime is your dy dx. Okay, yeah. And then dy dx y prime they mean the same thing. Okay, yeah. And then two y prime, then that would equal two y prime times cosine x minus y sine x, which equals two x plus two y times y prime. Okay, what's your final answer? Because you need to find a y prime. Um, yeah, I didn't really know how okay. to get farther than that. Okay. Would it, so wait, it, would it be um, y prime equals uh, negative sine y times sine x plus 2x all over 2y minus cosine x? That's right. Okay. That's right. You yeah. move this. You move this two y y prime to the other side. Yeah. You move this negative y sine x to this side. In the end, you have y prime equals two x plus y sine x divided by cosine x minus two y. Okay. This is move around. Okay. You don't need this equal sign here. So you're working with an equation. So each step is still equation. You don't need, you see this? You don't need this equal sign here up front. Oh, okay, gotcha. It doesn't make sense. See, you have a equal to, then equal to, you have too many equal signs. Those okay. make in the middle, the, the equal sign makes sense. But the, in the beginning, those do not make sense. All right. Okay, uh, so this is a Julia, right? Okay, thank you, Julia. And next one, so that's seven, nine. Angel, you ready? Okay, let's go. Oh, let me make a presenter. Yeah, go ahead. Do you see it? Yeah. 
Okay. So first, I try to find the derivative of the left side of the equation using product rule. I started with four cosine x, and its derivative is negative four sine x. And then the deriv and then times sine y plus the derivative of sine y, which is cosine y times four cosine x times y prime. And then the derivative of one is zero. And then I moved this, this two to the right side. So it's gonna be y prime four cosine x times cosine y equals four sine x sine y. And then I divided this two by four cosine x times cosine y to get y prime. Just making a y prime over here. And then you could cancel this four out. So it's gonna be sine x times sine y over cosine x cosine y, and then sine x over cosine x equals to tangent x, and then sine y over cosine y equals to tangent y. So that final answer is tangent x tangent y. Yeah. Great. That's only a typo over here. This should be y prime, right? Yeah, I missed the prime. Yeah. That's great. Okay, let me see. One more thing. What did I want to talk about? Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, that's it. That's oh, I like this. Okay, I like you put the parentheses around. Yeah, yeah. especially for this one. You attach y prime. You put the parentheses around. Without the parentheses, it could be so confusing, right? Mm -hmm. I like. And this is around the sign cosine. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. Anybody else? Let's see who has an. Okay, Chloe, are you here? I see you Hi. on the. Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, do you like to try, let me see, um, we're up to 11. Do you want to try 11? Um, so I'm, I've am i been catching up with the work on Lumen, which I understand, um, but I, I don't have like too great an understanding of the derivatives yet. Uh, you like to try? Do you, do you, well, this one might be a little bit difficult. Do you know how to use the chain rule? No. Not yet. Not yet. No, I am. I'm still like on. Um. I'm still like getting used to the, the derivatives of um the trig functions. Okay. So. Do you think trig function that easy? Only think of the root of a sine is cosine. The root of a cosine is negative sine. The root of a tangent is secant squared. Derivative of a cotangent is a negative cosecant squared. You you only have to remember these four. But okay, but try to catch up. All right, I'll call you next time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Emily, is Emily here? Hillary? Jason? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, Jason, Jason, do you like to show uh, 11? Oh, uh, can I see which problem is 11? I'm sorry, can you repeat? Can I see which problem is 11? Uh, you haven't done yet, 11? I, I did my work, but I didn't number them. Oh, you don't, oh, I see. So that the tangent of x divided by y equals to x plus y. Oh, I didn't write the original problem, I guess. Okay, so you haven't done this one yet. You like to try 13 or 15? Uh, sure. Okay, which one? Uh, just any, I just need the problem. No, I... You, uh, you want to do on the spot? Yeah. All right. So 
share your screen with a black, uh, whiteboard. Go to share content. Go to share blank whiteboard. Okay. Have you have I made you? Let me make you a presenter. You have to be a presenter first. Okay, you are a presenter. You go to share content. You choose the top one. The white black whiteboard. You can write on the whiteboard. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Do eleven. Eleven is changing of the angle is x divided by y okay. equals to x plus y. Divided by y. No, tangent. Tangent of the angle of tangent is x divided by y. Angle of tangent. Right. The angle of tangent oh. is x divided by y. So you find the derivative of tangent x. No, 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 no. Let me write for you. Okay, erase this. So it's a tangent. Yeah, do you see Alexandra type for you? Tangent of, let me write here. Tangent of x oh, yeah. divided by y equals to x plus y. All right, so equals to x um, plus y. So you find the other of tangent secant square y. Okay. Uh, so it's chain rule. You have to consider quotient rule for taking oh. derivative of x divided by y. That's a quotient rule. So it's one dy. X minus X Y and then equal to one plus one plus so Y DX. So you move Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let's let's check this. So let's check the derivative of X divided by Y. So you have the derivative of x, that's 1 times the bottom, that's y, right? Yeah, oh, that's y, right. and then, then minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is x, y prime. Then all divided by the bottom square. So we have to follow the quotient rule. Y square. Y square, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, so this now becomes yeah. second square x divided by y as the angle multiplied by chin rule y minus x y prime divided by y square equals to derivative of x is 1 derivative of y to the y prime okay so you move the dy dx oh so you try to isolate dy dx so you could uh, Alexandra, that's one, right? One plus y prime. You're missing one because the derivative of x is one. Uh, I'm having trouble trying oh, to okay. the y dx. So now, right. So now this side, the left hand side, you have divided by y squared. Why don't we move this y squared? 
to multiply on the left hand oh, side. Let's clamp. Right, let's do that. So we'll have y squared plus y squared dy dx. What is y prime? I like to write as dy. Then this side you're left with secant square x divided by y times y. Then you have this y prime term x secant square times y prime. So you want to move, you want to regroup the y prime terms together. Square. Second square x divided by y times y minus x y prime. So let's see what's y prime. So your y prime equals to let's um, y times secant y times secant square x divided by y y times secant square x divided by y. And I want to move this one to the other side, so minus y squared divided by y squared plus x secant squared x divided by y. Okay, so my answer is this, y squared, y prime equals to y secant of the angle minus y squared divided by y squared plus x secant squared of the angle. Alexander, what do you mean it's the even numbers? Oh, no, not yet. 4 to 16, not, not that. 4 to 16, we're going to do next week. Oh, it's time. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all right, let's do next time. So 4 to 16 is for, thank you, Jason. Let's do next time. Four to sixteen. Uh, sorry, it's it's um, time. Professor. Yes. So it's four to sixteen. Um, what page do you have for? Because I noticed the that page, um, the page is one twenty seven. One twenty seven. Four to six. Even numbers. Okay. Page one twenty seven. Four to sixteen. Even numbers. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, page 127, 4 to 16, even numbers. So, Professor? Yes. That's the homework, right? Oh, that's not homework. The homework is on your Luma, Luma learning, right? This no, is I mean, show. so like we ha always have for the next week, we have to do this when we come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's good review. Okay. Okay. Also, you. did you take attendance already? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, professor? Yes. So I've been I've been working with um like a combination of the textbook and YouTube to catch up. So um yeah. I understand enough about derivatives to do like a couple examples for next class, so that's what I'll just prepare. You need, right, you need to practice. You really have to catch up because mm -hmm. it's shown we're going to have more material come in. Okay, thank you. All right. Right. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. I'll leave the class. I need to go to my next class also. Okay. Have a good day.